Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to Rogue System. Uh, this is the second in what's going to be a short series where we're going to go through the systems here and put this ship, the Flying Fox, through its paces. Last episode, we managed to power everything up, well, almost everything, and we managed to undock. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be flying this off somewhere. Now, there is this kind of annoying buzz. Uh, that is a proximity audio alert because we're still fairly close to the station we uh, undocked from. Can I'm just trying to see how we. What if I go to here and take that off? Ah! That got rid of it. Alright, that's good. Okay, let's talk about getting ourselves to another planet. So we're going to go to the navigation panel here. And you can see here, this here is our entire solar system. Okay, so we are in orbit around this third planet here. This little icon here is meant to represent our ship. And these little dots are meant to represent moons. So uh, this particular system here has four moons. Uh, we can zoom, if we select that, there we go. We can zoom in on selected. This is the system we're currently in. We're in orbit around this planet in the middle, and we got all these other moons we can go to. Uh, let's zoom back out to the solar system. We can also go to these other places here. And I'm thinking about, let's make this a bit of a journey. The sun, of course, is right in the middle there. So both of these will be buzzing. I think this one might be the better, safer one to go to. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. So we're going we're gonna to go over to this planet here. We'll zoom in on that one. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this moon right here. So this, what is this? UESS 23.2.1. Very imaginative name. <laughs> We're going to set that as our destination. Okay. So now that is set as our destination. And now we have a new button that's come up here transfer panel so we're going to open up our transfer panel where we get to control how we're going to get there so we have our MES constant G and we have MTS which says not yet implemented so we can't do that the MES system is this system which I've actually yet to turn on I still got to do that those are our main engines that we use for getting from one body to another and then MTS is our uh, maneuvering thruster system uh, for booting around in orbit and stuff like that so we're going to use this one because it's the only one that's available. It would be the appropriate one anyway. Come on. Why won't that highlight? It might not like it because I'm going... I don't know. Zoom out again. Select something different. Let's set that as our destination. Transfer panel. Mode not available. Oh, you know why? Because I haven't turned this on yet. Oh my gosh, I'm a dummy. Let's turn on our main engine. So, engine number one. This is really easy. You just got to basically turn them on. And then we're going to turn what's necessary on. There goes our superconductor. Whatever. And then we got, we got two engines. We obviously would like to have them both going. No need to fly around in circles. There we go. That's all that is. And let's put on, you want to keep the throttle lock on. Uh, you can control each engine separately, but that would be silly because you pretty much always want them to be locked together. So keep that on. Well, we're going to put on the AP, the autopilot auto throttle, and we're not going to go into reverse. No. So there we go. That's good. Now let's zoom back in on this guy. Clear our destination. Zoom in on selected. We'll try this again. Select you. Set our destination. Transfer panel. Yay! <laughs> uh, they say it's a bad idea to go at full throttle. This puts a throttle limiter on there. We'll put the throttle limiter at 80%. This will get us accelerating at 0.82 G's, or if you like, 8.04 meters per second. The way this works, by the way, I'll zoom out again, is uh, this is meant to be sort of, uh, I won't call it near future, 
but I guess physically possible distant future where we have engines that work with ridiculous efficiencies um, and so we don't necessarily have to worry too much about running out of fuel or running out of propellants at least not when we're running on these main engines uh, but the laws of physics still apply in the sense that um, you know we're gonna be traveling there there's no faster than light speed there's no um, warp drives or anything like that we're gonna proceed to there in a uh, constant burn situation. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, we're starting over here, we're going to burn all the way along, constantly accelerating, and then at about the halfway point, we're gonna start reversing our thrust and we're gonna start slowing down, hopefully arriving at our destination where it is what we want to be. So that's the idea. Uh, kinda like if you're a fan of The Expanse, either the books or the TV show, and frankly, if you're not a fan of The Expanse, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but that's basically how they get around in, in uh, that series as well, and other sci-fi situations and trying to be physically realistic. So this is trying to be physically realistic. Anyway, let's set up the rest of this. So we got to inject ourselves into a prograde orbit. We have to set our periapsis and apoapsis of our orbit. Uh, what is our current? We are currently at a periapsis of 657, 658 kilometers. We're going around a moon that should be smaller than that. So let's go with 550 kilometers. So there's going to be our orbit. Uh, we're going to keep it at an inclination of zero. And then down here at the bottom before we get ready to go, uh, this is telling us how far our target is away from us. This is telling us uh, the duration of the burn. So the total time to get there is going to be four day, 4.11 days, a little over four days. And at about the halfway point, this is going to be the first half of the burn, and that's where we're going to flip and start reverse thrusting the other way. Uh, let's see, what else do we have to do? Well, we have to point ourselves in the right direction. So let's get going with that. Uh, let's explain what we see here. I have this in navigation mode. These green rectangles are actually representing our orbit around this particular body. So this is the way we are traveling around the body like that. This little blue circle here with the little lines coming off of it, that is our prograde vector. That's the actual direction we are moving right as of this moment. There's another vector down here. This, I guess, must represent one of our radial vectors. has to be just because it's pointing towards the planet. So let's start looking around and what I'm looking for, you'll get all kinds of icons. This one I had to look up. This one, this little blue one here, this is actually our direction relative to the Sun, the solar system entirely. We don't really care about that too much right now. What I am looking for, and by the way, the whole plane of this solar system is in the same plane as this galaxy here. Okay, so this is the icon I was looking for. This is actually representing the direction to our target. Shouldn't be too surprising if you look at the map. You can see we are going to be blasting right by the sun. I'm hoping that won't turn out to be too bad. I picked this planet because this planet, the planets are rotating in this direction, so I'm hoping as we move we'll get further from the sun as opposed to if I went to this planet, we need to get closer to the sun. We'll see how it goes. But the thing you have to pay some attention to is we're going to go blasting off in this direction, more or less in a straight line. Um, so you got to sort of look to make sure there aren't going to be any obstacles in our way. The sun hopefully won't be in our way. We'll see. Uh, but the other thing you got to be aware of, so we turn around back this way, is the planet on which you're orbiting. If that direction vector was, say, aimed straight at this planet, um, that would be a bad thing. You would simply just drive straight into the planet and that would end your game really quickly. Similarly, if the vector was sort of really close to your retrograde vector, which is this one, uh, burning retrograde will lower your periapsis, the lowest part of your orbit, and if this gets into the atmosphere and your ship travels into the atmosphere, well, that will end your game as well. So you got to make sure, see this is pretty close to my retrograde vector, I don't necessarily like that, but that's okay, we just have to be in a different place in our orbit. So 
We're going to press period, and that's going to cause some time warping to happen. We are now moving at five times speed, and you can see here we are, well, planet's now out of sight. Our retrograde vector is moving. Uh, because we're moving in orbit. Whoa, it pushed. Sorry, that was. Oh, dear. Oh, there we are. Wow, that is. Oh, that's because I'm on five times speed, of course. Um, that's because we're moving around the planet. Let's take a look at the planet. We are traveling around this planet. And what I would like to do is keep traveling until my prograde vector, which is this blue one gets pretty close to this vector here. This uh, vector which is the direction in which we want to go. So that's going to take a little bit of time, so why don't I do a little bit of a uh, editing jump. Uh, I stopped my time warping because <laughs> I just noticed that uh, I have a bit of a warning light here. Uh, my cabin temperature is low and that's because I forgot to turn on the HVAC system. <laughs> so now the heaters are on. Hopefully it'll warm up in here a little bit and that light will go away. Realize there's something else I forgot to do after I undocked and that was to deploy my radiators. So anyway, why don't we change our displays here display I want to see if we can get a display that we might actually see these deploy that might work I guess I'm looking kinda of down one of the masts yeah so de deploy the radiators radiators are connected to these two docking bays so the first thing we have to do is actually open up these two docking bays I don't know if we can see anything happening here in this view nope and they are in motion Oh, and I also realized too, got some lights here. I don't need my docking lights anymore, so I'll turn those off. Turn the floodlights off, we'll just keep the navigation lights on. There we go. Okay, those are open, and now we can deploy our radiators, which we'll find, of course, in our thermal management system. Radiators, there we go, deploy, so we shall push that one. Do we see anything happening here? No, I see nothing happening. Okay, that just deployed radiator number two. Wait for that. In uh, it's done. Okay, uh, let's deploy this one and we'll jump out. See if we see anything. There we are. We can see it moving. See that? There's our radiator moving. Sweet. So now we got our radiators. <laughs> uh, didn't get any warning lights as far as temperature, but I'm sure that would have happened eventually. All right, we're back in business again. Again, we, oh wait, let's change our camera to our forward camera. There we go. Oh, 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 stop. Stop, stop. My, I am stopped. Uh, we are close enough now. See this? This is our direction we want to go. Where's my button? Here we go. Oh no. Sorry, it's not lying. <laughs> it's that. Where is that blue? There it is. No, we're st that makes more sense. So, still kind of close to our retrograde vector. You can see these uh, kind of lights, blue. This is all in the HUD. Again, just a visual thing showing you what direction. So we're still more closer to the retrograde vector than to anything. So we'll continue time warping. And we'll come back to this once we are pointed in a more or less prograde direction. Okay, we're getting close to this now. You can see with the sun glare, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, but there's the limb of the planet there. But now... Um, actually, I think we're getting pretty close. I think I'm going to stop this before the direction we want to go starts to get too close to this moon. I don't want to drive into that as well. Oh, I think we're close enough. So let's shut this down. Turn down the time warp. Okay, let's get back to our navigation screen. By the way, you can see here we have lost our warning lights. So we are all nominal in the green. Uh, this is all good, so we're just about ready to hit commit and get going. But before we do that, we have to set up and get ourselves pointed. I'm already kind of manually pointed in the right direction, but 
uh, let's get the autopilot to do it for us. So we've talked a little bit about this part of the navigation system. This is just for simple pitch roll and yaw attitude control. This is the part I'm interested over here. This is for navigation. Uh, the top button here is for your setting up the reference frame. We want to set this for our destination reference frame. So it's gonna use the this guy to tell it where to go. And we want to point ourselves in IC prograde, destination IC prograde. So we're gonna engage that. And I think once we hit commit, that should get us pointing in the right direction. Hasn't done anything yet, so let's hit commit. And hope for the best. Oh, there we go, we are starting to accelerate. And this little green cross that's now come up here, this little green X, that is the direction in which we want to go. This is where our destination is. Remember, things are moving, so this is sort of where we're going. We are traveling in more or less a straight line. You can see we're already accelerating. It's sort of funny, this thing starts to accelerate before it's even pointed in the right direction. Uh, so that's why it's important for you to sort of get into the general right direction before you hit that commit button. So we are now traveling at about uh, 0.8 of a G, or about eight meters per second squared of acceleration. You can actually perceivably see that planet moving, even though I'm not in time warp right now, I'm still in regular time. So that is kind of cool. So we are rather booting it. If we take a look here at our orbital data, you can see our apoapsis, the highest point in our orbit, is dramatically increasing. Pretty soon that will be, we will have reached an escape velocity as well as our velocity is increasing as well. One thing that's a little bit, I find personally, just kind of a bit goofy. Um, I mean, right now, you know, we're accelerating, right? At close to a full G and you would definitely be feeling that sitting in this seat right it'd be like the seat was if you imagine taking your chair and laying its back on the floor and kind of sitting in it it wouldn't be too far off about what that would be feeling like which um wouldn't be uncomfortable that's why you want to keep acceleration you know not not too crazy high oh we're escaping now but here watch what i can do this is something i think they, they i'm sure this will get dealt with later but i could get my seat out of flight mode there we are we're rotating around the harness is lifted off and we can exit here and I am in free fall, right? This is zero G right here. I'm just kind of floating around. I mean, what really should happen is as soon as I leave that seat, I should basically just like fall kerschmock right into this back wall here, which actually brings me to another thing that I'm not 100% kind of happy with, but I hope we'll get dealt with in a future update is the design of this cabin entirely. I mean, you know, in a situation like this, we're going to take, I can't remember what it was, three, four days? I think it was four days to get to our destinations. We're going to spend about four days getting there. And during that four days, basically, this back wall, here we are, this back wall here, let's back away, uh, is going to feel like the floor. So really, in the design of the spaceship, this should look like a floor, but instead, it obviously looks like a wall. This down here looks like a floor, but it won't be like, like that would be completely weird and disorienting in the ship. So I think the design of this cabin should be such that if we're gonna pay attention to realistic, sort of a re semi-realistic space sim, you know, that should be the floor and the floor should look like a floor. If that makes sense. Maybe it's just me. Okay, let's get back in our seat. Ah. There we go. <laughs> and get us back into flight mode here. Okay, now I've already shown you that you can accelerate up to five times time warp speed. There's another thing you can do as well as you can take naps. If I press U, we're gonna go and take a little bit of a sleep. And down up at the top right there, it's counting down the minutes. Um, it starts at 180 minutes, which is three hours. So we're just gonna take like a three hour nap. So this is the way you can jump ahead in time. Um, you can see it's not exactly flying through time here. It is still kind of going kind of slow. I would assume this is something that will continue to be worked on and improved upon as the game progresses. Again, we are really in very early access. 
and 20 minutes, 10 minutes to go. And there we go, our alarm clock has come up. We've taken our little little nap. We've woken up again, still blasting. Yeah, approximately the right direction, I suppose. Sure. Uh, let's turn on our aft camera, actually. Let's go to displays. See if we can see, we should be seeing our planet. There it is, there's the planet we were blasting away from behind us. Right, so we've moved a respectable away distance away from the planet. We can go to our navigation. We are still in orbit around here. Only three hours have gone by in our four-day trip. We can zoom in on that. Oh, we have already moved so far along in this direction that we have, we're have we no longer on this display. We're off the screen here somewhere. So let's go back to our solar system view. And why don't we do a whole bunch of, or at least a, We'll do some sleeps, and uh, we'll get back to here once we can see sort of where we are on this map. Ah, I've taken another, I think I took four naps, and you can see now we're just coming into view here on this solar system scale. I know it might feel like we're traveling really, really slowly, but remember, that we are accelerating this whole time, right? Like our velocity is doing nothing but increasing and that's sort of the, the magic of this constant burn trajectory um, is that you are accelerating the whole way. So we end up getting there in a matter of days. Anyway, uh, we'll keep taking some naps. We're gonna be well rested by the end of this and uh, we'll cut back to this when we're ready to do our reverse thrust. Oh, well, okay, we are preparing for deceleration. Okay, doesn't look like we're coming too well. We've still got some more to go before we're, let's um, take the display. We got a lot of stuff here. Let's put the display on declutter here. There we go, that's a little bit better. So we're getting ready. We have cut our throttle. Yep, we are traveling at, oh my gosh, look at our speed here. Uh, 1.4 million meters per second. <laughs> so we're traveling at a crazy speed. Nowhere near like, you know, speed of light, by the way, is like 300 million meters per second. So, you know, nowhere near that kind of a speed, but certainly uh, traveling at a significant velocity. So we're at about the halfway point. You can see we're traveling in more or less a straight line. No uh, Orbital mechanic y home and transfer type of thingies. That's all kind of time consuming. It's just going straight at them. Uh, so, I think there's nothing left to do. It takes a little bit. A little time warp, just we'll do one more nap. Here we go, another nap. It takes a little bit before it suddenly says that we're actually going to begin decelerating. So rather than wait for it, I'm glad I did. You can see the minute. There we go. Now we are actually decelerating. We should be. Our, yeah, our velocity is going down. Over here on our MES system, you can see the reverse thrust has been uh, engaged. So um, yeah, rather than flipping around and burning in the other direction, we're just putting the engines in reverse. Uh, I don't know. To me, it makes more sense to sort of do the flip and burn, mostly because... It just seems an unnecessary thing to have your main engines be able to thrust in both directions. That just seems an unnecessary thing to do as well. And again, this has to do with the whole immersion of this. We're now like thrusting backwards. Let's uh, like I'll give you a sense of the navigation back on here again. Is that that doesn't help? Declutter. Okay. Um, but you know we're accelerating at about eight meters per second square, close to a g in a reverse direction, which means like now I'm, the, it would feel like gravity is forward of me. In other words, I'm kind of hanging from the harnesses in this seat. So again, imagine, you know, taking your seat, you're taking a seat, uh, strapping it with the back to the ceiling, climbing on up there, harnessing yourself in there, hanging down from it, and now I'll hang out there for a couple of days. How comfortable do you think that's gonna be? It's not gonna be very comfortable. Um, so just, I don't know, from an immersion standpoint, it seems to be something that would be a little bit silly, but uh, 
I don't know, maybe maybe that's just me. Maybe it's something that will be addressed in the future. Anyway, we're going to be doing some more uh, some more naps, and uh, we'll cut back to this when something interesting happens. But I think that's going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time. Thank <laughs> you.